you have to explain, you know, about lethal limits of living organisms and the fact they can't just take this pulse of hot water coming at them. You know, there's, I could go on and on, but I won't. Of uh, all the land and stuff that's on the belt, have they ever indicated long term how many acres they wish to use to develop? Oh, they, they, that map that map tells you they're, what's on the what they're slating for development is 1,900 acres, or 50% of the wetland or, or of, of the woodlot will be developed in the future. That's what's on the books, and then and then they promote that the remaining 50% is going to be conservation lands, but they really have to conserve that by law because they're wetlands. Yeah, but it's, it's not even like it's 50% on one side. No, and the rest will be pristine no, no, because it's no, all no, throughout. It's, and so what's left yeah. will still look like trash anyway. Yeah. And, and the important thing yeah. for um, people that, that get their drinking water from wells here in New Maryland is that uh, the Baker Brook watershed is huge. It's massive. And it, it wraps around uh, that portion of New Maryland as well. Mm -hmm. And you have Garden Creek watershed mm -hmm. on the northwest uh, perimeter of New Maryland, which is also quite large. And those are going to be fragmented. And so the normal drainage pattern, the normal amount of water that typically goes into the ground and percolates down to hit the bedrock and recharges our, continually recharges our groundwater, even in periods of drought. That's the beauty of forested wetlands. Huge carrying capacity and those water levels don't really fluctuate too much during um, drought. So that sponge is critical to remain intact. Otherwise, if you, dis if you interrupt that, uh, there will most likely be problems in the future. Now, what, where, do you, where do you have the information of these areas which feed the Big Brook area and the part of the Brook? Um, I don't, I'm not very educated on that part, but where, who came up with all these? Is this a provincial? So who came up with the watershed boundaries? Yeah, who came up with the watersheds? Okay. So, so that was a study that was done by, uh, by members of the Fredericton Area Watershed Association, as well as, uh, so the, the head of the Fredericton Area Watersheds Association is also the director of a department at UNB, and that's called the Environmental and Sustainable Development Department. And uh, Sean Dalton, Dr. Sean Dalton, and and some of her students actually did the studies that helped them to delineate these watersheds. And they did it for the nine watersheds that fall within the city limits of Fredericton. So, so the watershed, like, was, was this information recognized by the province as being, yes, this is the way it is, or uh, did it need engineers to stamp it, or <coughs> something to be considered official. Not, uh, I don't if know. If it was the students doing a project, you yeah. know, so maybe was, there's... They, and the, her, the student who helped to do a lot of this was in the Department of Geodesy and Geomatics, so they're, uh, you know, that's that's what they do. They create well, all sorts of maps. I know what I was doing, like I wouldn't want yeah. to be designed No, but now this, is, now this is, okay, well this is somebody who's gone on to do graduate work as well, mm -hmm. and so the Fredericton Area Watersheds Association, that's one of the things that they specialize in doing is creating all kinds of maps. And so they've got a, they've got a, um, a water table mm -hmm. map as well. I mean, that's a, that's a website well worth checking out. But is there any way that the university would look at us and say that information isn't correct? Well, actually, the depth of water um, uh, table map, uh, which was pioneered at University of New Brunswick, this type of mapping, mm -hmm. uh, the water below the surface. And of course, this is integral to the understanding of, of um, groundwater recharge for aquifers.